teachers, family, and friends. I don't know how many of you had a chance to see the Buffalo News story on Friday regarding St. Adelbert's appeal. And of course, there's been subsequent stories and news releases since then. As an appeal committee, we'd like to read you the full press release issued by the appeal committee and also share with you some very important information and thoughts afterward. Please know we tried very hard to reach as many of you as possible personally beforehand, though urgency did not allow us to get a hold of everyone. Know that we respect you all and we'll try our best to keep you informed every step of the way. The press release read as follows. Vatican assures St. Adelbert Basilica to remain a worship site. Diocese of Buffalo resists directive from Rome. Almost three and a half years ago, parishioners and friends of St. Adelbert Basilica on the east side of Buffalo, New York, announced they had begun the process of appealing the decision of the Diocese of Buffalo to close St. Adelbert's as a worship site and merge the parish into St. John Canty Parish. Today, the Save St. Adelbert Committee is pleased to announce that the Vatican has made the decision that St. Adelbert Basilica should remain open as a place of worship. In a letter sent to the appeal committee representing the parishioners and friends of St. Adelbert Basilica, Under Secretary for the Congregation of the Clergy and the Vatican, Reverend Monsignor Salso Morga Irisbeta wrote that the dicastery had reviewed the matter thoroughly and rest assured that the church, St. Adalbert's, will remain a place of worship. Following receipt of the letter, representatives of the Save St. Adalbert Committee reached out to the Diocese of Buffalo to implement the Vatican's ruling in a collaborative manner only to be told at the meeting that the bishop would continue his plan to merge St. Adalbert's into St. John Candy's and cease regular worship at the Basilica, leaving it only open for special services such as weddings and funerals. We were overjoyed to learn that the Vatican saw the merit of keeping our beautiful Basilica open for worship and cannot understand why the Diocese of Buffalo would violate the spirit of the Vatican ruling save St. Adelbert Representative Ronald Suhaki said, how can we remain open as a worship site when all regularly scheduled worship is eliminated? Clearly, Bishop Kimmick and the Diocese of Buffalo are ignoring the Vatican's intent. Suhaki continued, not only does the Diocese's flawed plan mean there would be no regular masses in St. Adelbert's, despite the Vatican's judgment, it also puts in jeopardy all our special events that have been planned for months, such as our Lenten soup suppers planned for March 12, 19, and 26, and community presence at the Broadway market during the Easter season. The Save St. Edelbert Committee promptly sent a letter to the Vatican asking for clarification of Rome's ruling. The good people of faith at St. Edelbert Basilica remain undeterred by this latest setback, Suhaki concluded. We trust in the wisdom of God and the Vatican and look forward to worshiping every weekend in St. Adelbert's for years to come. You know, when we got the letter from the Vatican recently, we felt it was a blessing. Because let's face it, there's been hundreds of appeals across the country and abroad without success, so odds were long. But St. Adelbert is not just a parish. It's a family. And no odds can deter a family from doing everything possible to look out for one another. By the grace of God, the Vatican took time to review the matter thoroughly. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So the words in their letter were made carefully. They did not use them loosely, and certainly not randomly, because there's power in words. 
I still remember the day when the diocesan letter was read at our mass saying we would close. It was like a punch in the gut. It took your breath away. Like why didn't the world stop? How could we go on with mass that day and the every day in the face of that? So this day, we are again struck by the power of words, the Vatican's words. Rest assured you shall remain a place of worship. It seemed to us the Vatican had been a mediator. They reached out and hand to the bishop saying, yes, you indeed have the right to merge parishes, but they also reached a hand out to us to say, yes, parishioners and friends, be assured that St. Adelbert, this beautiful and holy place where for 125 years, generation after generation of our families, parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents have celebrated baptisms, communions, confirmations, weddings, and funerals, all the cycles of life, and celebrated Holy Mass. Yes, be assured, you shall continue as a holy place of worship. So the committee met with the bishop to see how his plan would unfold in light of the Vatican ruling. We anticipated changes. A parish such as ours in the black, with all its bills paid, likely would be connected with a parish that needed help meeting its financial obligations. But what we had been asking for all along, to be able to come to St. Adelbert weekly in worship, that would now be part of the plan. So we had high hopes. Unfortunately, the bishop has chosen to use his power differently, telling us he will make us an oratory, eventually stopping all masses by our September anniversary date and using it only for special occasion masses. Now there are oratories throughout the U.S. and Canada. They have daily and weekend masses, as well as daily and weekly devotions. So the bishop is making a choice. A choice to violate the spirit of the Vatican's directive. So we have made a choice. To continue to work for the good of our parish family. In consultation with our lawyer, we have sent an urgent letter to the Vatican asking for clarification of its ruling to be a place of worship. Does it mean visiting every once in a while, dusting off the pews for a wedding or a funeral? Or does it mean having it as the focus of our faith, gathering weekly to gain sustenance from the holy body and blood of Christ and from one another? Believe me, it is not our intent to make Bishop look bad or embarrass him. And we hold no ill will toward our pastor, Father Ted, who we know has taken an oath to the bishop, which he must honor. But we ask the diocese if they could hold off on their decision until we hear back from Rome, and we're sure they would get back to us that day. Instead, three days of delay, Three days we called asking for an answer, and three days they would not return calls. Thus, we had no choice but to communicate the status of our appeal to all of you ourselves, so you would know truly where things stand. So please, no matter what happens, no matter what you hear, continue to pray, continue to stay positive, Continue to come to this beautiful basilica to support one another as we await word from the Vatican. We believe no matter what, God's voice will not be silenced. When Jesus was here walking the earth, he said a prayer to his heavenly Father, asking for our daily bread and saying, Father, may your will be done. Let us join together as a parish family in the words of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all.